Okay. All right, everybody. Are you guys ready to improve your timing and your technique in the home? Play some of the best tennis, have some of the most fun. You see what I'm doing right here? I'm playing the true tennis VR. Well, I'm pretending to play the true tennis VR right. in, in all honesty. But I will say this. My better half, Yvonne, who's not a tennis player, she, she tried this. She's like, this is amazing. She's like, I love this. So she loved it. If you're a tennis player, you're going to love this. I have a lot of fun with it. All right. So, uh, guys, if you're watching this, we're going we're gonna to learn all about a, a really new way to, to practice your game. So good to see you guys. I'm going to plug in and put my headset on. Uh, all right. I have just thought just thought thoughts. we'd start with a <laughs> just thought we'd start with a little fun there. But uh, guys, this is a lot of fun. And tonight's topic is improving your timing and your technique. And this is 100% real and true. You can do it in a very useful way. We're we're not here to talk about a, a video game tonight. We're here we're talking about true true tennis VR. So we have Mark Segan here, one of the creators of it. Tell people why you named it True Tennis VR uh, and, and about your passion and obsession for tennis. Well, right. Uh, so, so great to join you and, and uh, your dedicated uh, group, uh, Pete. We, uh, we really love what you do. Um, and it's, it's exactly what you do and what you love. Uh, and I think what we all do, which is to, to learn to hit tennis balls better, make ourselves more effective on the real tennis court. Uh, when you say this is not a video game, uh, that does go to the word true in two different ways. One is we focused entirely on making whatever we do here is transportable to the real court. It's useful. It's just a two-way street. What we do there makes us better in here. And what we do, most of all, within true, the world of true tennis VR makes us better on the real tennis court. I've had the experience, I think you have, and I know I, one of our one of our uh, co co creators on this has, uh, by his own report, improved his volleys like uh, almost unbelievably. He um, he was not traditionally a volleyer. Um, the other way, of course, is that it's not when you say it's not a video game. This requires real skills, and it reinforces real skills. It's not, you know, people say, oh, I remember we tennis. We tennis was fantastic. And every, and it's, it's an object of nostalgia and, and it was great fun. But what you did was you poked. And if you made contact, it just gave you a, a picture perfect shot. It's not what we're doing. If you swing correctly, if you deploy real technique, then you're going to get a good result. You're going to get the result you expect. Hmm. Um, so that's, that's the, the long answer to your question. Yeah. So guys, come on in, say hello. Let us know too. I'd, I'd be curious to know how many people out there actually have, uh, first of all, one of these, a, Met a MetaQuest. Does anybody have anything like this? Let me know if you have one. Comment if you do. Comment if you don't. And I really encourage you guys to stay around. I don't, I, you know, don't come here and go, oh, I don't have that or I could never do that because I'm telling you, First of all, once you try it, you're going to be hooked. You're going to be like, this is fun, and I can see how I can improve my technique and my timing and my accuracy too, you know, because to get in the groove, hitting this ball kind of is like playing tennis where it might take you a couple minutes to start finding your targets. You know, you might be off to the left and off to the right and find that you're hitting short. Like it, it takes you a while to get dialed in. Uh, and it's, it's very much like the timing of hitting a, a tennis ball correct. You feel like, okay, now I'm getting under the ball the right amount to give it a, the right amount of lift, and I'm, I'm, my swing path is long, and my hips are rotating at the right time to get it cross-court or to get it down the line or to hit a little drop shot. And what's really amazing about this thing is you can practice every single stroke. You can practice your topspin forehand, your slice forehand, your drop shot, your lob, your volleys, your overhead, same thing on the backhand. You can go from side to side hitting forehands and backhands. Um, it's just really, really cool. Uh, so this is this is the actual true tennis VR racket. Can you explain? We're going to do a whole presentation too, guys, so make sure you stick around. But can you just explain how this racket works? And Of course. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. The you know the the meta quest, the the quest two. Okay, I see we've got uh, we got some folks joining us there. Um, yeah. Yeah. The Bill is pointing out he's had an older model. The one this is the meta quest two, which is the first. Uh, what's so-called inside out. In other words, it's got no stanchions or any connection, no wires. It's all powered by itself, which is, you know, I, I have a long history in technology. Um, and that's, to me, a technological miracle. It's a fantastic device and it's very well priced. What we're doing, it comes, this, with two hand controllers. The hand controllers, of course, give you an easy way to actuate things for whatever else you're doing inside the MetaQuest, that whatever activities, whether you know, people have heard of Beat Saber or the thing you love so much, Pete. Uh, Supernatural. Supernatural. Get great workouts. Exactly. And by the way, that's true of True Tennis VR too. But the workout, of course, that you get with True Tennis is a tennis workout. It comes with two of these controllers. What we do, because these track the movements that the, the, the headset wants to detect, we developed and you know doing real grips with a with a the controller is simply not in the cards and and having it doesn't have the swing weight or the feel and it's got buttons on it we developed a great effort bring it more over to put yeah, it right, right in front of your exactly. face right in front of your face see, yeah stick it in front of my own face yeah this is the this is the uh, true racket without the controller in it this is it with the controller so that gives it with the controller. That gives it the uh, hold it here. That gives it the proper swing weight, and it and it what it what it does. We we hold this thing. You can do two hands. I have, as you know, I I'm a kind of a nut. I play two hands both sides, uh, but not on volleys. And um, and this allows us. It has a normal grip. In fact, it has a normal grip wrap on it, uh, obviously. And uh, it allows us to when you see this. When you're looking at this here, you're seeing a really strange looking object. When you're inside the headset, you are seeing a tennis racket. This shape here, of course, well, there we are, allows you to hold it. And you hold here, and it's like you're holding the throat of your tennis racket. You'll swear you're holding the racket. We, we, we like to joke with people, have them put on the headset, say, uh, ch check out the string tension. And the hand goes right through. <laughs> the strings are. But you think you're holding a tennis racket. When you swing it, it's an incredible sensation. Yeah, it's, it really is. Uh, what I'm going to do, too, like as you guys are watching this, and if you want to get one of these rackets, uh, which are like incredible deal, how much How much are the rackets? It, right now, it's only $50. $50. We've been in beta for a while, and yeah. we're about to go uh, live into the app store. We've been in the app lab, but it's easy to look up anyway. Yeah, so so I put the link there, guys, in the chat if you, if you want to try one of the rackets. Um, but you have a presentation for us, so without sure. further ado, I'm going to bring that up and uh, let's go for it. It's this is really really fascinating stuff, guys. Enjoy. All right, well, we'll uh, we, we can comment a little bit through it, Pete. Yeah. Super. All right, so I've got I've got your presentation. It's right up there. Great, super. So um, I'll, you know, the, one of the worst things you can do with a presentation like this is read it to people. We ain't going to do that. But, but you can see that what we're talking about is the, the whole concept of realism. We want people to be using real, uh, their real tennis technique. And you'll find that when you use this, if you're using your best technique, you get good results. Um, it's good, very good uh, general exercise. We have a uh, and and for it mentions injury recovery here. We have a routine in there that, in fact, uh, Pete, you and I uh, talked about uh, before I uh, we, we put it together called in a chair. So somebody who's either confined to a chair like a wheelchair a player or somebody who is recovering from an injury can literally play tennis sitting in a chair. In the ball yeah, can, I, can I stop you there, too? Yep. Because. I get so many emails. One of the most heartbreaking emails I get is like, I've got to drop your membership or I'm not going to be buying any courses anymore. I love your courses, but I, I'm just not going to be playing tennis anymore. I got injured. You know, I've, I've got to stop playing tennis. But you can, reading the emails, you could tell like it is breaking their heart that they cannot play. So this is a great – I thought about this as I was playing this. I'm like, this is 
great for people who are injured and can get back on the court, but it's also great for people who love the game and for whatever reason, maybe you just you just can never run for a ball again, or you know what I mean. It's just like too dangerous to be on the court. This is a great way where you don't have to give up tennis. You can still, like you said, play in a chair and and have fun and and feel like you're playing real tennis and still have your passion. So, uh, I just think it's so valuable for so many reasons, and this is probably one of the biggest ones is for people who love tennis who it's breaking their heart that they can't play anymore. You can still do it with this. That's right. Either way, it's it's a great point. Whether you're going to get back onto the court or not, you can still have that sensation. You can still have activities. And, and Pete, quite frankly, you know, you and I will talk more, but we'd love to build that out, that whole scenario out much more. Right now, it's we're doing ground strokes in kind of a mini tennis uh, scenario, which is great fun. I mean, you get, you get all the spins you want to do. Uh, with targets, uh, which is very rewarding, but we can be doing volleys, we can be doing overheads, whatever you want, and it's um, because the the ball is so the, the trajectory of the ball coming to you is so perfectly defined. We can make it we can make it uh, safe. In other words, you're not going to fall out of your chair because of a ball that went too wide. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and of course you see the last point here, which is about coaching. Coach like Pete. You know, you have your own philosophy, and uh, obviously there are a lot of people who have great belief in you and that philosophy, uh, whether it's how you approach the forehand or or I, I know one of the big things I've learned uh, watching watching your videos is around the serve. Um, we, we are not, uh, what we're able to do is have coaching, coaches assign homework and then have their students do that homework. Uh, and in the in the very very short term, we're gonna get homework reports. So you're gonna be able to see that your students have done that. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited guys. I'm actually gonna be inside the app a little bit, hopefully here soon. And, and I really love this because it is a really great coaching opportunity. And so, you know, uh, it, it's gonna be pretty cool. So yeah, you, you can't know, escape crunch time. Yeah, yeah. So, so this will be cool. Where if you want to try this, we can actually be working on stuff uh, together yeah. inside this app, which I am like so excited about. All right. Anyway, uh, continue. Yeah, you notice we mentioned shadow strokes here, which was one of your big things. You should really comment on shadow strokes because you've got a, you're pretty passionate about this. Yeah, I mean that's that's another big benefit of when I started to hit with this. I'm like, this is great because. This will make shadow stroking fun. You know, shadow stroking, I don't know why it is because I love doing it. You couldn't get me to stop doing it around the house, wherever I was. Every time I've coached a really high level junior, they naturally do it. But the people who struggle with technique, it, it's like it's hard to get people to buy in. To, to do it. And when I did this, I'm like, this is going to make shadow stroking fun and addictive. People will like to do to eat the broccoli because this is not eating <laughs> broccoli. This is this is having dessert, but it's doing something that's really good for you. And again, this rewards good technique. You, you can't just be slapping at it and and you know have the ball go where you want nice and firm with Tosfin. You have to actually execute the strokes properly to get the ball to go where it's supposed to go. So this is going to make shadow stroking fun. Finally, thank goodness. Yeah, and, and, you know, into the details of that, the point of it is when you're, when you're swinging in a shadow stroke, well, you can be doing weight transfer correctly. You can be swinging the racket very nicely, but there's no ball there. There's nothing for you to watch. This fills, that, fills out the whole activity of the shadow stroke and makes it have a purpose and a structure physically. And it's really super. By the way, uh, as you can see at the bottom here that says Hopman Tribute uh, Film, I would encourage anybody to go look at that. Go Google Hopman Tribute Film, and it shows what they're doing here. It is, it's just a gas to watch. Uh, anybody who doesn't know about the great Aussie coach and uh, Davis Cup captain uh, Harry Hopman, it's, it's a real treat. But that's what we're ta talking about doing here is bringing dimension and purpose and fun to shadow strokes. Now, that's right. So uh, cool. why is it true tennis? Because because of what we're doing. We've we've solved, we think, two big problems in a really interesting 
world. This MetaQuest 2 is, I say, I call it a miracle of technology and it's a great deal. It's only $300. And what we did was we implemented a world of real tennis physics, whatever spins, whatever speed, it's all realized in there. You'll see in a second that we can do drop shots, we can do lobs and topspin, backspin, whatever you want. And then of course, there was the development of the racket because that's the other piece. We have to have the swing weight, the feel, the safety, because it, it, um, it's got to be very strong and it's got to be easy to use because you have to put that controller in there, but you may want to take it out for another activity like Supernatural or, or um, Beat Saber. And you want it to be just pop out real fast and back, put, pop it right back in. Cool. Uh, do, do you know Steve Lewis? He says, True Tennis VR is an amazing app. I use it to train and it really helps my game, especially my volleys. Steve Lewis is dynamite. We have we've we have spoken a couple of times. He's uh, he's from these parts here, so we speak the same language. May, if anybody can't tell, I'm a New Yorker. Um, but uh, yeah, Steve's great. Um, he he really understands what we're doing here. Awesome, awesome guys. Yeah, Steve, uh, as we're going through this too, we want this to be interactive. Uh, so if you're watching this and you're like, what are they doing, or, or you know, does this really work, or any questions you have. Uh, feel free to hop on in and ask a question in the chat beside the video. So um, continue <laughs> on. This is good stuff. Sure. So this, of course, this refers to what we were just saying. A little, I'm, I'm, uh, I jumped ahead where I'm um, talking about the amazing technology and bargain, which it is. Um, we, we should do the demo here, huh? Let's go for it. So we got about two minutes showing you, putting it through its paces. I'm going to stop at one point to talk about one little detail here, which we're pretty excited about. Notice what you'll, you'll see there. Of course, we're able to hit proper top spin, and those are the blue thing on the other side is a target. Yeah. Slice. Right. This is, of course, a forehand slice. If there's a uh, plan, uh, that's a righty we're looking at. Yeah, I was very pleased. This I did this demo, and Coach yeah. Pete, Coach Pete was uh, complimenting me on the on my technique. I was very pleased at that. Yeah, look the volleys, the volleys. Look at look at the clean ball leading with the edge <laughs> of the racket. Well, that time you went over, but I, and you yes, missed that one. I did. But all the other ones, you're leading with the one. edge. Yeah, see that? I, I I gave that one a good good bit of stick. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And it, it, what's so weird? is when you hit the ball, I don't know how the heck it happens. When you hit the ball, it actually feels like you're hitting the ball. Maybe after we get through this demo, you could explain how that is happening, how that sensation happens. Right. It's it's actually, I, I can comment on that from, uh, you see, we're doing little drop shots right over the, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to pause for one second. Yeah. Pause the video. Yeah. Oops. I, I, didn't pause. I'm going to go back and pause. Go back. It. Yeah. Right. Gotta find the pause button. There it is. Are you slamming overheads? Here's overheads, oh, I, I guys. Guess I am. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't pause. So let's. Yeah. Let's go back there for a second, and I gotta drag that back. There you go. You gotta keep going. I think. Oh, string there tension. Okay. okay. If you take a look at this, this is a settings panel inside. And you can see we've, we've got several settings. You, you want to, whether you have the racket or not is up here, whether you want the ball trail music, never mind all of that. What we're talking about is bite and string tension. We can actually adjust the string tension, which everybody here knows about. But there's another characteristic that's very important, and that's bite. How much spin you're getting off the, um, off the strings. So basically, between those two things, you can play pretty widely with how that racket behaves. And it's very true to, um, it's, we, we have found it's very true to, uh, to real life. Uh, you know, one of our key advisors that, uh, and, and uh, partners on this is the, the great Aussie player, Mark Woodford, who Pete knows quite well too. Um, 
And uh, Mark plays with one of the most unbelievably strung rackets. What is it, Pete? It's 13 by 15, is it? Yeah, yeah, that old Snowart thing, right? Well, well, they actually went to a Wilson, but he went to, yeah, always. Right. They think they designed it especially for him since he always had that crazy strings. Yeah, they did. And it's like anybody else who picks it up doesn't know what to do with it. They, they're just they, they're getting crazy, crazy shots because it has so much bite. And mm-hmm. uh, and you can play with that. If you, I mean, his must be off the charts. Here. He's probably at a six. But I love to play it, too. And a string tension, probably a little less than this. But the string tension is pretty true to life. So, uh, well, yeah, we, we can go on here. Yes, yeah, so if you want to practice Cam Norrie's uh, string tension of, like, 17, go for it. Yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is, to me, lobs are great. You can do – Yes. Especially, it's, it's great fun when you, when you have a little more bite on the ball. You can do some wild. But and then is, overheads. I love doing overheads with this thing. Oh, in the neck. Uh, Keep uh, your head up. There it is. That's exactly. <laughs> I never do that. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so we, that's that's the uh, presentation. Very cool. Very cool. And then do you have anything beyond? Uh, I think you have a couple more slides. Is that right or no? No, no. I think that was uh, – I think that's, that's it. That's it, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to come back with the two of us. Guys, ask questions if you want. I, I again, have, have a question because uh, I'm still not quite understanding. I, you know – how because this is a racket there's not any batteries in it or anything how is it feeling like i'm hitting the ball how do i get that kind of like especially when you hit a good one you just feel that smooth hit but you you feel the impact how is that happening there are two there are two pieces two answers to that question one is that the controller itself has has a a uh, a little so-called haptics actuator in it confers a buzz we contain the this the controller so snugly, and this is one piece. This is a very unusual method of of, um, of molding called uh, gas injection, but it's very it's made made of one piece of material, and that that buzz is conducted throughout through this thing very effectively. So mm-hmm. this, you will literally feel the moment of contact. But there's another thing, too, which I learned through my many years in consumer products of all sorts, um, which is that when we're doing an activity like this, our eyes, our mind and our hands integrate this into a into what becomes psychologically the feel. I've seen many players, especially looking at them with drop shots. They say, oh, boy, I just we we were just at the uh, USPTA uh, World Congress. Just got back uh, last night. I had. Eight hours at the airport. I got home at four, four a.m. Mm. So, uh, but one of the guys was saying as he was hitting drop shots because I encouraged that because it, it really shows off the the subtlety of the of the the physics that we've created. And he says, "I'm when I lay my wrist back, real soft. I'm getting it so much more effective. It feels so good. It's it's that integration that the mind, the eyes, and the hands do." Interesting. Yeah, this, it's, it's a magical thing. Yeah, it really is. Uh, one thing that's kind of cool, guys, I have my own uh, drill in there. It's called the Pete Drill. And I, I was like, yeah, because this is a great opportunity to work on grip changes and the variety and different feels. So I have a drill where you, you hit a ball with toss spin, then you change your grip, and then you're using the grip to hit a nice little touch shot. And then something that – not enough people practice because a lot of drills I do out on the court look okay. And then whether it's kids or adults up to a very high level, I mean, even some really good kids, you know, will say, okay, let's do lobs and overheads. And then the kids cannot feed and the adults cannot feed a lob. And then they'll say something to me like, Oh, I don't know how to feed lobs, you know, like, and so I was like, we need to have this in there too, the lob. So it, it's got like a cool target, and you, you know, you can you can lob at it, and um, and and as we say, instructions even coming on how to do it technically. You know, that, that's another thing too. I would I would recommend that if you do get something like this, you also film yourself. is is very interesting. I've I've videoed myself doing it, and I'm happy to say I look pretty good when I hit the ball in this thing. Uh, you know, Mark, what do you think? Give me a critique. Oh, no, you, 
look. The technique is good. Somebody, I don't know who this would be. There must be someone in the world who could think Pete Freeman's game doesn't look beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so it looks good. And then I have this other woman, Ruth, who's another real student in the game. Right. Her technique is beautiful. She put this on, right? She looked even better than me. She's moving her feet. She's dancing around me. She's hitting the ball. She looks like a pro, you know? And then I had some people in my camp use it. And I mean, their technique wasn't very good when they're on the court. And when they were putting this on and they were hitting the ball, they just did not have the look of a tennis player. So, I mean, this is you, – you should also film yourself to, to go, okay, what do I look like when I'm in this world swinging? Do I look like I want to look hitting a ball? Or you're probably going to learn some things going, ooh, if, if that's what I'm doing, you know, in this world, <laughs> in this world right here, you probably look very very similar hitting a ball on the court. And and you can, you can easily see uh, that there's a lot of room for improvement on your technique when you use this thing. Yeah, I'm really glad you you mentioned this. This was one of the you know, when you do this, um, when you do this activity, it's very revealing. Um, when we we had Mark Woodford come to a an event, we were doing a lot of the a lot of the demo of this, and he was going to, you know, talk to people, sign some autographs and things like this. But as soon as he got there, his some instinct took over, and he saw people playing with it. And he started coaching them. And the reason is because he saw immediately something that once he noticed, we started to notice. Somebody playing this, when you're watching from the outside, you can see instantly the technique. You can see a tennis player instantly. If this person has played before, if they're, if they've got, if, if they're hitting the ball effectively, you don't have to see the ball, you don't have to see the results. It's incredibly revealing. It's a great way to look at it, how somebody's hitting the ball. Mm -hmm. Well, we're getting some really good questions. Um, so I want to go through these questions. Number one, Chris says, is it compatible with the MetaQuest 3? If so, is there a reason to get a MetaQuest 3? Or would you just stick with the MetaQuest 2 for now if you already have it? Right, yeah. Um, right now, I would stick with the MetaQuest 2. There's a couple of reasons for that. It's uh, particularly well suited for this activity. There's some technical subtleties to that. Quest 3 is great. It's directed at a slightly different purpose, too. Uh, and it's considerably more expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, how does it feel or work for the serve? Right now, we are not doing serves. Uh, and that has everything to do with the toss. We will figure out a good way to do that. We're not happy yet. The one thing I, that's going coming within days, by the way, is something that's very, a little bit analogous, which is the uh, bounce overhead, which mm. is really a lot of fun. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so they're going to be working on – we're going to be adding a lot of the shots, uh, and you can do already do, I mean, a lot of shots. It's it's yep. really neat. Uh, link to the MetaQuest also, do you run game scenarios? Uh, Mary, first of all, uh, you could just – Go on Google and type in MetaQuest 2 and you can you can buy one. But I've I've again I'll put in the link now that we have more people on. If you want one of the rackets, this is what they make. See, they make the racket we and do. the technology. Yes. That's a true tennis VR. Yeah, true right. tennis VR makes the racket. So I put the link in the uh, comment section in our chat, and you can do that. This you want to go to uh, MetaQuest and get a MetaQuest 2. Buy a MetaQuest 2. Um, yeah, the basic version is great. It's uh, it'll you can do lots of things with it even besides this. Um, but uh, but above all, as tennis lunatics, uh, we we want it for yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we go. This is a great question. Uh, so it gives you your freedom to talk about what you believe about yours compared to the others. What's the difference? Well, uh, you know, we, we appreciate anybody in the space. Um, we, we have focused really strictly on getting the physics right. So if we, 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 when you play true tennis VR, you're using real strokes and it requires real strokes. You get the results of your swinging should very much track what happens on a real tennis court. That is not what others have focused on. And, um, you know, if you try any of the others, you would see that uh, it's a little bit different in that regard. When you're talking about visualization and, 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 and that sort of thing, that's not what we've focused on, no, uh, or, or tactics or things like that. 
There are other reasons that we haven't too. Remember that you can't run around a great deal with this. This is meant for small small movement of the feet, which, I mean, we have, we have a friend uh, who, who talks about tennis as a game that's really played within two or three steps, which is another very interesting way to look at tennis, uh, mm-hmm. totally apart from the running. Um, but you really can't do construct large points here because you can't run. And when you do the tra- some some apps in um, in virtual reality will have you transport. Well, that becomes a very different experience, and it's not it's not for everyone. Put it that way. Yeah, yeah, it's, and, and that it just doesn't really feel realistic when you do that. Um, so, tennis house. I don't know if you know uh, Devore. Do you know Devore? He's no. got. Yeah, well, you should know him. Uh, great guy on uh, Instagram. He's like close to three hundred thousand followers. So, and he he makes a ton of great videos on YouTube and Instagram. He's probably on TikTok. He's I'm actually going to be speaking at his conference um, in uh, next month, October twenty eighth. So, and we're going to have uh, some of your friends going to be there. Johan Creek will be there. Oh, and Amelia, okay. San- Amelia Sanchez is going to be there. I'll be there. It's the divorce is going to be there. It's going to be, it's going to be great. Um, awesome. So yeah, so it's going to, going to be really cool. All right. Any, any more questions guys on this? I would definitely uh, give it a try. And, and I will say this too, if you've never tried, I know trying new things can be uh, intimidating or, you know, you feel like, well, this kind of looks silly. I don't want to look silly putting this thing on. I feel goofy. Once you put this thing on and it, it's amazing, you, you can, uh, you can do anything you want. You can basically say, I want to look at France, you know, and you'll be like in this thing in 3d people walking around you walking by the Eiffel tower. I mean, the things you can do in this doing amazing workouts, watching movies it, it, it just goes on and on and on if you're a gamer you could do i'm not really a gamer you know but if you're a gamer i mean the games are probably much more amazing in here uh you can hold meetings in here which i think maybe sometime down the road we might be doing some meetings in here i think that'd be fun um well, that's and then they're pushing hard they want yeah. to be doing that sure yeah yeah and then uh and then of course we're all obsessed with tennis you know having this thing with this is just awesome. So, uh, you know, I, I would definitely give it a try if you've yeah, got I mean, the if, got if, the dough. May, Pete, yeah. Remember that the idea of virtual reality is that they're simulating reality. So that when you put that thing on your head, it you can turn around, and it's not that the screen moves like you're holding a like you're holding your computer. You're you're you know you're holding your phone like that. When you turn your head. You are looking at a different part of the room. If I have a, it's it is as if you are in that place, mm-hmm. uh, and and that's why it's uh, it's so effective at training. Yeah, here's a question: Do the pros use this technology now? That's a great question. The pros play uh, at a in, a in a very different way from us. Um, Past a certain point, the little tiny edges that they're looking for are different sorts of things. We don't really aim this at pros for that reason. Um, I know that sounds a little bit vague, but um, I would say that it, it, this is, for example, reaction things like volleys. This is this is very good for them. Um, but the the little edges they're looking for in the rest of their game. I think they're probably best off being on a court. Yeah, yeah, uh, I do. But I have seen, you know, on uh, you know different social platforms, I've seen some pretty high level players, you know, trying different tennis VR, uh, you know, experiences. Yeah. So I mean, they're um, they're they're definitely aware of it and 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 doing it. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit. I'm yeah. I'm curious to let, know what the USPTA thought about it. But we also have another follow up from from Susanna. Do you have, first of all, I've made some videos with, with me wearing it and actually playing it, not yeah. goofing around like I did tonight. But um, do you have some visuals uh, that she can kind of see people actually wearing this and playing this? Well, there's, a, there's a good visual right at the website, truetennisvr.com. You know, yeah. going back to that pro thing, if we're talking, you know, you talk about 
touring pros or or others. I know Mark Woodford likes to use it when when he's when he's off the uh, on the road away from uh, away from home. There are others as well who you know who like like using it to keep sharp physically and to have their reactions and relationship to the court reinforced. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Yeah. Um, what was it? Oh, I want to know. You, you just took this. If you guys don't know what the USPTA is, by the way, it's basically a professional tennis association of coaches where they get together and they share. He went to a, co- a convention, so they get together and they share information, drills, and you know how how to run stuff at your club and just like the whole business of coaching and and just learning from each other. That's basically what it is. Uh, so you went to the convention and you had a booth. What was the feedback? What you know, had people ever seen anything like this before? How many people have seen it? What what do they think right. about it when they Very, when they try it? Yeah, we we had a great time. This was Monday Monday evening, and that you're you're right. That that event is fantastic. Um, you know, I, I something a light bulb went on. It should have gone on earlier. You know, coaches are a social breed because they're in the people business, and they're terrific to talk to. They they're they're easy to talk to, and they express themselves very readily. Um, we had a lot of people come by and a lot of people trying it. Uh, very few people have tried this category before. And we got really very, very enthusiastic uh, reactions, very good ideas and insights on applications, on drills, and, uh, and, um, and more. Mm-hmm. Very exciting. Very cool. Awesome. Well, I, I think... Uh... I think that might be it for tonight. Uh, anything else we need to cover before we take off tonight? I don't know. It's up to you, boss. You're the director. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I just, again, uh, encourage people. I, I put the link in there uh, uh, several times in the chat. You know, give it a try is all I could say. I mean, this is one of those things where you can't get it until you do it. Like, you know, we're talking about it and it's just like one of those things where kind of like a movie. You're like, oh my God, this movie is so good. You know, like, and then this happened and then that happened. And you're like, okay, I, it sounds like it might be good, but you don't know how good it is until you try it. So, um, you know, give it a try. And and I, I, I just know if you like tennis, um, you're going to love this. And it doesn't mean just that you're going to try it the love is not going to be that you're automatically going to be good at it right away, you know? So it's not like you put it on and it magically you're playing like Roger Federer. So that's not the idea of this. Uh, so, you know, you put it on, you don't have a great first outing. Don't think, well, oh, this thing stinks. Cause I didn't play very good. This thing, I don't like it. it it's going to teach you how to play better. It's going to teach you how to improve your timing, improve your technique it is a teaching tool. It is not something to make you feel better about your tennis game. It's something fun. It's challenging. You're going to enjoy it, uh, but uh, you know you got to work at this a little bit. Am, yeah. am I right in saying that? I think that's that's true. Uh, except that I w- I would add something else, which is it does. I I would argue sure it makes you feel better about your tennis game because without having to chase a lot of balls or step onto a court and, you know, you tr- to try something new and you're embarrassing yourself, whatever, you haven't got a partner, or you haven't got a court, you can do tons of reps, really focus on what you're working on. And the next time you step out onto a court, you're going to be that much better. We love this thing. There's a reason we're working on it. There's a reason we developed it. We love tennis and we love the, the prospect of employing a technology that's, that's right here, right now and allows us a little onboard onto improvement, real tennis, true tennis improvement. And that's why we're so excited about working with Pete and all of the folks that, that uh, the other folks that we're working, starting to work with, with you, Pete, um, in, developing, in developing different approaches, different applications for this tool. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So Susanna says, so ultimately you're saying that uh, practice with this transfers on the court. And I, I do think so. I mean, I think it's going to help with so many things, you know, tracking the ball, 
concentrating, staying focused, dealing with making the ball where you want to make it and how that feels versus being a little off, whether you hit it in the net, whether you hit it left or right of your target or a little long or a little short. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I agree with everything Mark's saying as far as, you know, there's so many benefits to this. If you're practicing and trying to work on new things, it's 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 kind of nice to be able to do it in your living room, have the ball come on over and over again, not have to pick up balls. I mean, th- this is this is pretty, you know, that's a lot of benefits as opposed to like picking up the ball machine, lugging it in the trunk, getting out there, pulling on the court, you know, having the balls get stuck, going to pick up all your balls, right. putting it back in the ball machine. So certainly a great experience. But it's- but I do I yeah. just know that some people are going to think, well, I put this on and I just want everything to be rewarded because, you know, it's, it's, you know, VR reality. I want, I want the, the fantasy happening and no, it's, you gotta, you gotta work at this. That's well, all I'm I trying to say. You know, one fantasy is gee whiz. I didn't have to drive to the tennis. Court That's a fantasy right well, there. there. It is. You know, yeah. the other thing is a couple of other things. I mean, it's great for learning to, to, to watch that contact point, which is so important. And there's a much more basic thing. It's fantastic for warm-ups before you go out and play. Yes. Before you spend that, you know, everybody's out there. How long are we going to warm up today? You know, they, they, we have an hour and a half. We, we just uh, we just got on this court. No, I'm warmed up already. I, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're kind of like your mind, your body is engaged. And then, you know, obviously right around the corner, uh, this is the first week in Atlanta to where – it actually feels amazing, but it's 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 noticeably cooled down. It, yeah. it hasn't been hot, Lana, this week, and you know, so a couple of months from now, especially people who live more up where you live, New York and Canada, and you know, Midwest and all that. Uh, I know a lot of you guys put the racket away, not that you want to, but because you know maybe the indoor facility is so far away or it's just too pricey that this is a great way to where you can again stay sharp and have fun. I do a lot of challenges and lots of people, although I still don't think it's a good excuse because I say you can be shower stroke in your house, but lots of people will say, well, I wasn't able to do your challenge today because it was too cold outside. Now, next year when we do our challenges, there's going to be no excuse because I want you to have exactly. one of these. That's, that's the expression. You know, listen, that this is how I'm, I stay sharp in the winter because it's really annoying to go go to a tennis court in, in, in Manhattan. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, very cool. Well, I'm sure we're going to have a lot more of you, Mark, on uh, live streams and in videos and me making videos with this thing and and me putting more drills into your app. So uh, this is kind of like an introduction, guys, to this tonight and to Mark. And you guys will get to know a lot more from him and and learn a lot more about this. And hopefully more of you will, uh, like we had Stephen Lewis on tonight, hopefully more of you will have one so you can kind of join in and be able to say, Oh yeah, I use it. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah. Well, Pete, thank you so much. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for, uh, bringing this to life. And, uh, we look forward to, uh, talking to you and, and your, your great audience a lot more. All right. So I'm just going to end tonight with, if you have not got your free ticket yet to tennis con seven, do it now, do it. So I just put in the link tennisconseven.com. seven.com. We'll see you guys. Susanna says, fascinating. Uh, Mark, uh, Brian Morris says, thank you. So thank you, guys. Thank Lord you. says, thank you. Uh, have a great night. We'll see you guys. So Friday, lunchtime, we're going to go with uh, Will Buchik. We're going to talk about smart doubles. Sunday night at 8 o'clock, one of the best online instructors, somebody I respect a lot. Ryan Reedy is going to be going over the serve, which, you know, his serve videos literally have millions of views because he's so good at teaching it. So he's going to be Sunday night. And uh, we're just going to do a lot of live streams leading up to tennis con seven to give you guys as much value as possible. And then we're going to put all these live streams. If you enjoy these live streams and want to watch it again, um, we're going to put all the live streams this year, which we did last year too. We put in the lifetime library. So, uh, remember, when you get a free ticket to Tennis Con 7, you have 48 hours access to watch each day. And to be honest, it's kind of, in my mind, like going through the mall and you get to taste a piece of chicken here and a piece of this there. And then you decide what you want. We have the dream team of coaches. So, you know, if you really want to get serious about it, watch it the free week and then you kind of take notes like, okay, this is the kind of stuff that I want to be working on. And then dive into the videos deeper. Like I had um, 
Richard Bryce on the other night. We had a actual members only uh, live stream and he went over hip stuff. And the last two days I've been doing stretches that he showed in that video. I've been doing it myself in the morning, getting up. Uh, so a lot of stuff is a super useful. And, and if you love tennis and want to get better, there's no better coaches out there. Uh, where do you get tickets? Suzanne, I put it in there. You just go to tenniscon7.com. It's, it's a live, um, uh, it's not a live thing. It's an online convention. We're not going anywhere. We're just going to be online like we are, and you'll get a ton of lessons. So you go to tenniscon7.com to get your free ticket, pass, whatever you want to call it, to be able to watch it with us. All right, everybody. Have a good night.